Hello, welcome to Forest Focus. None of us can forget the home game against Luton. The beginning of the end for Steve Cooper's negative subs cost points in a game where Forest were in control. Was it any different here as it finished 1 1 at Kenilworth Road? Forest conceding their 19th goal of the season from set pieces in the 89th minute after goal scorer Chris Wood had gone off injured. Oh, and Tyro Owanyi is injured too. Joining me to discuss the, another joyous day as a Reds fan, first of all, is Mark Southerns. Mark, good evening. How are you? Hello. Yeah, I'm all right. Could have been so much better, but yeah. Should have been. We'll get on to that. Uh, second guest today is Chris Aylmer from Forest All Over Podcast. Chris, how are you doing? Yeah, disappointed with the, the conceding the late goal, obviously, um, but trying to look at the bigger picture. Ah, yes. So that's what, well, my first question I've written here was that too negative of an intro from me? You make maybe think it was, Chris. Are you seeing is a decent point or not? No, it's not a decent point. We were one 0 up. We conceded late again from a set piece again. It's definitely not a decent point. It's two points dropped. But um, we have Palace and Fulham at home next. We have to make them count. They have Spurs and Arsenal away. And once Monday comes, we'll get that silly decision out of the way so that we can focus on our football. And you know what? Luton aren't very good. They didn't look good today. They look tired. They've got injuries. They're not a good side. If they do stay up, they'll go down next year. And uh, even though we've got nine games left, I'm confident we can make a count, uh, provided the punishments aren't too bad if we have any uh, on Monday. So, yeah, that's I'm trying to think of the bigger picture because we keep conceding late. We conceded late against Liverpool. We conceded late against Man United in the FA Cup. We keep conceding from set pieces. One was a second phase set piece against Liverpool. One was uh, a set piece uh, against Man United. And now we have a set piece. So the same things are going to happen. For, this is Nottingham Forest this season. This is the, the state of play. We just need to be... Better than Luton, and I think that we are. I suppose for I think we are better than Luton, but I suppose for Mark, the the thing is like the evidence before our eyes shows that we've got games that we could win, but we're just not winning anything. I mean, we should have won that game today, shouldn't we? I'd argue that out of all the games we got left, that was the easiest situation to get three points. I thought that Luton were absolutely terrible, really poor. They had no craft, no goal whatsoever. The only way they were going to score is from a set piece, and we looked like we controlled that until we conceded territory and possession in the last 15. And then they won. They had six corners. They won three of them in the last 15 minutes. Felipe came on. He had five touches and he lost both his aerial duels. So what did that achieve? That basically, all that achieved really was to go, we're going to give you the ball. You're going to get more territory. You're going to, of course, they're going to win set pieces with possession and territory. And they did. And that was their most, by far, their most dangerous method of scoring. If you look at the XG data, uh, 0.26 from open play, 0.34 from, open, from set pieces. So small XG anyway, but the majority of it from set plays. They were doing nothing from open play. So I, yeah, I don't, I didn't like, I thought we went, we went to five at the back early. I mean, I, previously he's done that with five minutes to go, maybe even in stoppage time he's done that. I would have seen the merits there. I mean, okay, Wood couldn't carry on. But um, bring Dominguez on and um, and you know play play an extra midfielder, try and get more, you know, keep possession more, rather than concede it. Because it didn't take much to win; doesn't take much to win a free kick or a corner. Right? It, they don't have to be a good side to win a free kick or a corner. You know, a non-league side could win a free kick or a corner against us and put it in the mixer. That was all they could do to produce a chance. And lo and behold, one of the three corners we conceded in the last fifteen minutes, we conceded a goal from, and Felipe was culpable because he didn't win that first header. He was weak. And I love Felipe, but he didn't come on and do what his, his brief would have been to come on and to make sure we let nothing slip in terms of aerial balls. And he didn't do that. So that that tactical move backfired for me. Uh, let me thank DH for becoming a member, Danscape as well, and Damien really appreciate the support. That's this, I'm so... I'm just really, I, I'm third away game in a row. I'm really fed up with Nuno. The second away game, certainly Villa away near Cate, okay. But uh, that was no different to Steve Cooper at home for me. Like Luton were dead and gone. They had nothing. And we were in control of that game. I know Elanga had a shot off the line. Anna Rigi had a shot off the line. I just felt if we just kept going, I know Wood had to come off, but leave Origi on or leave something up front. We had zero threat after they went off. I didn't get it. I mean, Gio Rain is like, a mythical being like you know like some kind of pokemon that my kid looks for that may or may not exist i don't know like i'm just so i'm confused and i find it really frustrating to be honest that we didn't see that game out but i didn't I, as soon as those subs went on 
I never thought we'd see that game out, to be honest. How many clean sheets did we kept? One game in 17, I saw. Like, what makes you think we're going to keep a clean sheet when Luton have one tactic to bomb it in the box and we just invited it? Time and time again, we'll get into breaking down the goals. I mean, uh, how much blame do you place on Nuno for this, Chris? Or do we have to look at the players for not doing their jobs as well? Uh, I've said it for a long time, even under Steve Cooper. I've said the players will will eventually let you down time and time again because some of them just don't seem to have the mental fortitude to finish a game out or see a game out. Um, and it's happened all across the season over and over again. Um, I blame I place a bit of blame on Nuno for switching formation early. I know, like you said, Wood did go off. I don't know who we had the bench, who we had on the bench, but it was early. Like, did it feel, was it seventy five minutes? Seventy four minutes. Seventy four minutes. Seventy four minutes. Yeah. yeah. 74 minutes, I mean, that is early to switch things up to defensive. And then you're just basically going to say, look, for the next 25 minutes, because it's plus stop, just like 20 minutes, 15 minutes plus stop, just, you, you can just come at us. Um, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand that. Um, I think the first half, we were, we were, we were pretty naive in the first part of the first half. Mm. 20, first 20, 25 minutes, Barkley was just almost free reign. Sangari and Yates couldn't get near him. He had a couple of shots from distance, and I felt like, what are we doing here? What is the strategy? But uh, the team and Nuno grew into the game. So, yeah, you know, and, and we came back after half time quite strong with a couple of big chances for the first 15 minutes after the second half. So I, I don't fully, I don't really blame Nuno um, for this. I blame him for that one switch, which is a big tactical switch, 15 minutes from time. But no, I, I don't blame him for this. It's, it's the players again, and it's those set pieces. And Mark, maybe you can help me with this. How is it that we have seven? eight corners and we don't look mm. threatening from any of them any of them and yet yeah. they have what three every set piece like every second set piece they look threatening from they scored a disallowed goal in the first half from one of them yeah. they scored their goal in the second half like why is it that everyone looks threatening against us yet we don't look threatening from any of ours even when gibbs white swings a decent ball in it just it's really frustrating um but no i i i, I don't blame nuno as much as i blamed him last week Go on, Mark. What are you no, I, 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 I mean, the set pieces. pieces. When was the last time we took a short corner? Where, where's the last time we saw any variation in corners? I can't remember. We we went for a spell where we started taking it. I think when the set piece coach arrived, we took a few short ones and we were doing a little bit of a mix up. Now, yeah, you know, for the last five, six games, all I've seen is the same corner delivery and it's doing absolutely nothing. You know, we're not creating any chances from them. Um, we had height on the pitch, we had the ability to cause trouble from set plays. Bournemouth had 11 corners and had seven chances from them in the week. So they, Luton, were susceptible to set plays and chances. And we did nothing with them. And we had more corners than them. And like Chris said, you're absolutely right. Every time we won a corner, I'm like, well, you know, the, this is going to go into Kaminsky's arms or it's going to be a free kick and they clear it. It was never going to be that we have an effort on goal. And um, every time they won a corner, panic. You're sitting there wringing your hands because you think, right, who's not going to pick their man up or who's going to lose the second ball. Um, and um, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Um, I just, if Felipe is going to come on and and surely he was given the brief to dominate and to basically lead at set pieces, which we know he can do, but he just didn't achieve that. He, he came on and you've got to say he should have done better from the goal. Um, but I think it was too early. I think he should have done it on 84, 85, not 74, 75. It would have made more sense to take Wood off, put a midfielder on, put Gibbs White down the middle. Um, and try and keep the ball because they weren't good enough to get the ball off us. I, I they, they, had, you know, in possession they had nothing. Their passing was really poor. They had no ploys, no methods of getting behind us. Um, when we went to wing backs, if anything, that meant Toffolo and Williams were further forward, had more chance to hit the channels, and they won the corners from Toffolo's side. He got booked in the last fifteen. He conceded the corner. Murillo conceded corner. So it was all that side. By going to wing backs, it was giving Toflo license to get more forward and not just pin pin his winger back, which is what he'd done for most of the game. Why disrupt that? It was working so well. Just stick to the back four, stick another midfielder on and try and keep the ball. And even if we did concede possession to them, I, it, we just looked in control. With an extra man in the field, I think we'd have seen it out. So I think he got it wrong. Simple as that. Or He got it wrong and Felipe didn't do his job. Right, It could have worked, but Felipe didn't come on and, and dominate like he had to. Yeah, like first half, I didn't think our press was very good. And we had a really rocky period at the start of the game, as Chris said, around Ross Barkley and not getting near him. But then it was pretty even first half after that. Second half, I thought we were pressed quite well. Luton, Luton are poor on the ball. And a, a lot of our chances came from turnovers, from errors from them under 
it wasn't like a groundbreaking press, but it was a decent press. I don't understand why we didn't carry that on. I do want to talk about the goal more as well, but um, we'll do that next. But thank you very much to Richard for the $5 donation. That's very kind, Richard. I'm sure you gave us $10 the other day, so that's particularly generous of you and very grateful for that. The goal then, um, uh, you haven't had a chance to watch it back, Chris, so I'll ask Mark first. He's touching I've watched it back. Mm. Felipe, as you said, very flat-footed. Uh, Burke peels off Sangare very easily. I mean, uh, we've said this before. A lot of the set pieces I thought we defended quite well, but there's always one, and it always ends up in the back of the net, and it's happened again, hasn't it? Yeah, and I don't understand the excuse for it. We should have been drilling those all week mm. because we went into the game saying that was their big threat, and it was. I mean, we could have played another ninety, and if we hadn't conceded the corner, we're not con- we're not conceding a goal. They didn't know they didn't know how to get behind us. I mean, Townsend came on; it gave them a little bit more craft. He was whipping balls in, but we were dealing with it. Nico had a fantastic game at full back he defended really well once again probably man of the match he's just been so consistent recently and and he was really had a hand in the goal I mean he didn't get the direct assist but it was his persistence that got us the goal so I felt sorry for Nico because he played well and Toffolo um managed his man quite well until the last 15 when they had more of the ball and more territory and once once he got you know a bit under pressure a bit more you can see he got the book in um yeah the goal was was it just felt inevitable, didn't it? And I'm I'm just happy we saw it out. I thought as soon as they scored, mm. it was going to be a siege. I typed in my notes that um, when we conceded the first corner of three, I, I put in in my notes head of steam. We were giving them a head of steam for the first time in the game. They never really had a bout of pressure until then. And it only came after we conceded that territory to them and went five at the back. Yeah, I mean, I thought our defence was good today. I thought Williams, as he said, was man of the match. Um, Bolly and uh, Murillo were really good. But then, like you say, at the end, when Murillo gave that free kick away, I was just relieved we didn't lose the game because that was a yeah. dumb free kick to give away. Yeah. And we just we regressed into old habits uh, as, as the game wore on. And a better team would have beaten us. So where we, I know we've got good games coming up, but we've got to play better than that. Um what did you make of the team selection, Chris? Um, Sangare came in, um, played with Yates. There was Hudson Adoy was on the bench with Origi playing, and Willie Bolly came in. Uh, overall thoughts on that? Uh, initially, I was a bit disappointed. I, I'd like to see Callum start from the beginning. Uh, obviously, Taiwo is out, so I was uh, that was the first thing that went through my head was alarm bells there. But um, no, I, I would have liked to see Hudson Adoy start. Dominguez on the bench as well. He's the kind of player, a scrappy player, who would be useful for this kind of game. Um, hard to balance it in my head now with hindsight because uh, part of me thought Sangari did well, then another part of me thought he he was he was poor. It's like sometimes he's good, sometimes he makes some awful touches and just kicks it straight out of play. Sometimes he's slow, sometimes he's got a great ball in him and he breaks up play. So I, it's it's hard to at first I didn't really I wasn't into it because I like to see Dominguez and Callum Hudson Adoy play from the off, but they were they were good impact players, particularly Hudson Adoy, um, who caused some problems late on. So. Yeah, I, I was okay with it. Um, I was concerned about Bali's pace, but, I mean, he, he proved to be really, really good uh, today. I thought he, he, he had a really good game. Um, so that's proved me completely wrong. I, I would like to see Omobamadeli and Morello still in there. But, yeah, no, uh, I was okay with it. It, it. it was just a shock to see Taiwo uh, not there. Yeah, just to reiterate, Tyro is out injured, as Liam was asking in the comments. I think he's out for... Well, at least a few weeks, a few games. We've got an international break where he's going to miss some games. Now we really have to hope Chris Wood isn't injured. He was rubbing his hamstring as he went off, so that could be a further uh, disaster. What did you make of um, team selection, Mark, uh, around Origi, uh, particularly? He seems to like Origi, which is fair enough. He did all right, but would you yeah, like want... was on that side? I would. I wonder whether how much of that was to kind of counter the Ogbeni threat because he's the pace, isn't he, on that side. So putting Alango over Toffolo's side might have helped. And I think it did. It, it, it pinned him back a bit. They couldn't really use Ogbeni in that first half and the much of the second half until the last 15 minutes. Um, and so I think it worked for that for that period. It meant that Alango was more withdrawn, but he, he, he still did well. Laid on the chance for Origi, which he should have scored, and he had the chance that... Was cleared off the line, which perhaps he perhaps he should have done better with. But I thought Langer was okay; he did his job. That was, it was all under control. I felt you know it was fine. I mean, Sangare 
put in nine tackles more than any other player on the pitch. He won five of them. He did all right, I think. I think the trouble with Sangari is he's too slow. He's, <laughs> it's it's a very similar criticism to Freuler. He get a player can bypass him quite quickly. His turning circle is is too too big, and I don't I don't know if he's got a future. Uh, he's he, in that position he, for me he's got to sit in front of the back four in a six and not in a position where he can't get exposed in the midfield where he was playing people were turning and going past him too easily and he avoided getting a book in although once or twice I think he he could have easily had he made contact got a book in and, and then we'd have been probably having to take him off so he was he was okay and when he got the ball he ha- he does have that composure on the ball and he does have a pass on him so you do get you do get a little bit extra with Sangari than perhaps you get with a Yates or Dominguez um I, I mean for someone of his size and physicality he's not aggressive enough for me I, he, he's playing him was presumably to get his height on the pitch to help at set pieces but you never look at him and think well he's just going to dominate he's going to be a towering figure in the box when that cross comes in doesn't he doesn't feel or seem it does he so he doesn't use his physicality for me in an impactful way either in midfield or when he's defending um so i'm looking for more of that from him whether that will come i don't know but he was good on the ball and he did put tackles in uh yates won five of five of his tackles so he was good alongside him i think i think yates got a grip on barkley chris is right i think barkley had three shots in the first 15 minutes and it was like what's going on here that we're not picking up their obvious danger man um, but we got hold of him and Yates did well. Um, and we just looked in control. I, I just think we looked in control while Wood was on the pitch. And and then, it, yeah, I think we just, it all it all kind of slipped. The mentality changed to one of, well, we're going to hold on to what we've got rather than, well, you know, let's try and craft another chance and go 2-0 up. Um, yeah. So it's just a shame. Just a shame, really. Yeah. Like I thought Sangari, like you say, he's composed, he's good on the ball. He uh he offers a chance to dictate play. Uh so I thought that was good. But do you have stats for how many times players get dribble passed? Because I thought he got dribble passed a couple of times. Uh they passed it around a bit. His his lack of mobility shows mm. at times in games. And I think that's an issue and whether that is addressed with the run of games. But second half I thought he was better until he flicked a really languid ball out for a throw in. But mm. um and then he lost his man for a goal. Which is, not, which is not good. You know, some insightful punditry there. So, yeah, uh, certainly probably need to see more of him and more from him, uh, I would think. Well, we haven't really talked about our goal, uh, Chris. I mean, that's a really good goal, I thought, from Nico, like we said, played really well. Really good ball from Gibbs White. No fancy flicks. Just hit an area where a striker should be, and there's Chris Wood to put it away. Yeah, brilliant goal. Uh, I, I actually thought early on we had some good chances and they were mainly created from Gibbs White. There was a lovely ball he played through to Origi, chipped it over the keeper, obviously wasn't enough power on us, cleared off the line. A um, couple other good moments. I think Gibbs White's first set piece was from a free kick. Bolly got his head to it but couldn't steer it on target. Um, and it just looked like we ha- our chances were going to be the better chances. They may have more possession, but it looked like we had the better chances. And that goal, um, Gibbs White, was it a no-look? chip in he didn't even really look he just chipped it in kind of knowing where wood would be wood wood's movement was brilliant by the way because i kept thinking oh he might be offside but now wood always knows when to stay on side same against brentford there earlier on in the year he times his run in between the defenders and straight in and it was a great finish as well to be fair to him it was like it was top class because you, you, you took it out of the air it was i thought i just i was sitting there going this is it this is this is what i want to see from from the nuno team i want to see good quality and I, and I felt like Gibbs Boyce, I felt like he really came to play today, particularly in the first half. Um, he got on the ball a couple of times and Alanga laid through a lovely bottom. He turned his man. I think it was it Mengi got a yellow card for, for pulling him down. Um, I just felt like he really came to play. And, and we got our rewards in the first half with that goal. Um, brilliant finish. And it was great to see him because Tyro's injured and Wood scores. And you go, OK, now we have a striker who's confident. Obviously, now he's probably injured. But it was just it was just nice, you know. Do you have to separate Gibbs White, the outfield, the, the open play player with the set piece player? Because he's getting pelters marked for his set pieces and his free kick on the edge of the box wasn't very good at all. But open play, like once we went, you said earlier, once we went off, once he went off, we had nothing going forwards, did we? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, in terms of the player most likely to open the opponent up, he was the best on the pitch, right? When, he, when we were finding him in his pocket and... When he got on the ball, we had that quality. To, you know, he was turning around and Luton were, were worried about what he could do with the ball. Um, 
And it, it, it was, wasn't was until about 20 minutes in the first half that he got in a few pockets and turned on the ball and ran at them that we started to look like, hello, we've got that little bit of difference that can open them up. And yeah, that, that's what I mean. I think we should just be more confident about that and, and look to get him on, on the ball in better positions throughout the game. And I don't know. I, I mean, obviously he went off as well. I mean, I don't know what was behind that, whether it was just fatigue, but I'd have left him on the pitch because he he was always the most likely to to give us that creative spark. We know that. So I thought he had a good game. Yeah, I think he, I think he was the difference between the sides. They didn't have anyone. Barkley was played okay, but he was a lot deeper and had to come deeper to get the ball. He wasn't really receiving the ball in areas that could hurt us and after the first 15 minutes. Whereas Gibbs White was that. He was he was picking it up off the striker with runners either side and it, it was it was really worrying them. But we didn't have enough moments like that because we didn't go after enough moments like that, I think. We didn't attack we didn't you know, we didn't impose ourselves on the game and, and we're right, we're gonna win this two or three nil. We could have done. They were that poor and there for the taking. They were tired, they were after the midweek game as well. They had nothing on the bench to bring on. It was such a good opportunity and to to let the point slip, I just hope that's not going to be decisive because, you know, Fulham and Palace are better sides than that, far better sides than that. So it's no way a given that we're going to win those games after that performance. Mm. Is it a good thing we've got an international break, Chris, to dust ourselves down? And I wonder about the mentality of this group to keep conceding from set pieces or, you know, when we kick off in two weeks' time, we're we right back to where we were anyway because they've still got to try and defend their box and they just can't do it. I don't know. It's something Mark said earlier, where he he mentioned that uh, you know once we conceded, he was just like, right, I'm just I'm happy if we can hang on here. And and unfortunately, that mentality, I I, I thought the exact same thing, by the way, and most Forest fans probably did. That mentality, unfortunately, goes through the team. Why aren't they thinking? Well, hang on, the seven minutes go, let's go and win this. Or why, when we're one nil up, are we not thinking when Alanga has the ball high up the pitch in the 86th minute? Why does he turn around and play it back to try and see out the game? When no, let's finish these guys off. Um. I think the break is good for us. I think finding out that this result of the FFP stuff on Monday is good for us. Just get it out of the way. Just bury it and let's let's move on. Um, I think it is good for us. And our next two games are going to be back-to-back home games and we can just sort of refocus. The fans can get behind us and give us a massive lift again. But, um, yeah, no, I, look, I think the break is good for us. But uh, Nuno needs to have a, a strong word with the entire team because – mentally they just seem to crumble in the most important moments of, of a game and uh it's just it's been happening regularly um since christmas uh, so we're about three months in now and and every other game seems to be a problem um and what are we one win in nine now uh two draws one win six losses um it's just it's not good enough and but but i do i do believe that the break will do us good but I also I also believe we need the dressing room to to be buoyant. And and final thing I'll say is that you know at the start of this year Steve Cooper won a couple of games Sheffield United Chelsea whatever. Then when Nuno came in he won against Newcastle beat Man United. So both managers had good starts at the start of their point in the season. And then for some reason it tailed off Cooper. For some reason it tailed off with Nuno. And we can blame injuries or Afcon or referees or whatever. But there's a pattern in the season where each manager started well and then we just don't seem to be very flexible or malleable so i'm just hoping that nuno can now come into this run of games and and really kick on and get the players up for it because we need them we need them more than ever this is a hypothetical question mark it's really difficult to answer um because we can't be inside (laughs) nuno's head would he have made those changes earlier in his tenure when he felt a lot more positive like at Newcastle, would you have taken? We didn't make those substitutions go into his shell. Is that a, is that something that's you know has crept into his psyche and is filled into the team now? I think it was the magnitude of the game, right? That's got to be it. It's got to be that it was a must must not lose scenario, wasn't it? As well, I think that probably played into his approach in the second half because I don't think he would have done. I think I, I mean, really, we had the players on the pitch and the energy in our legs compared to relative to them and the ideas and creativity on the pitch relative to them where we should have won two or three nil really in my opinion now had that game been 10 games ago when Nuno came in I think he would have gone for um, a, a bigger margin of victory and won the game two or three nil at the stage we're at now with 10 games to go and up against a team that were in touching distance if we lost I guess that's what played into his mind Fear crept in. Fear crept into his mind and fear crept into the players' minds in that second half. And 
that'll send us down if we're not careful. That's the trouble. I think the only way we're going to get out of this, given the players that we've got, we've got attacking talent, but we haven't really got, I wouldn't say we've got players who are high on concentration, who can dominate games and see them out and manage them out. We haven't got that kind of player in our team. What we have got, we've got players who can hurt opponents and score goals. So, you know, you look ahead to the Fulham and Palace games. What are we going to do there? Are we Are going to have edgy 1-0 wins where we're hanging on in stoppage time? Probably. That's probably what we're going to end up looking at. I don't want it to be that. I want it to be whether we win 2-0, could have got a third win at a canter. But I, having seen what I saw in the second half, that doesn't look like that's going to be our approach. The nerves are obviously getting to us and there's fear creeping in. And unfortunately, that was on show today. And I, that worries me. How much of a factor do you point, think the, the points deduction is, Chris? Because if we didn't have that over our heads, do we come out of that thinking, OK, we should have won the game, but we keep losing at arm's length and they've got really difficult games to come and we've got more winnable games to come. But that that uh, points deduction feels like just a massive cloud that changes it, the way we think about everything. It definitely does. And it might have even creeped into some of the players because we've won one game in nine since we've heard the news. So... It's, it, it definitely uh, plays on our minds and the players' minds. And, uh, yeah, I think, look, re in reality, if we're sitting here and there's no points deduction, I think we stay up and I think Luton or maybe even Everton go down. I do. I think that. I think that we stay up and that's it. Even though we're only three points clear of them right now, that's my belief. So it, it, it plays a massive factor, three or six, it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I, it plays a huge factor in, in, in what's to come for obvious reasons, not just mathematical, but psychologically. And Luton, it plays in their mind too, because they probably would have been sitting there going, right, it's a draw good result for us today because we drew, we're three points behind them, but they might get a deduction on Monday. So play, it plays in their minds too, which which just adds to the ridiculousness of the whole thing. But yeah, I, I think it's 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 such a big factor. Um, and that I'm that's why I'm I'm so happy to get it out of the way on Monday. Because the sooner we do that, mm -hmm. the sooner we can we can just kick on, forget it. And if we are in the bottom three come Monday because of whatever, three or six or two or none, whatever. We know where we are and we can just move on. And that's 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 the key, yeah, really. Um, I'm just so frustrated with it. I'm so frustrated that it's taken this long for them to make their decision. Even the appeal, the appeal's after the, the end of the season. So, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's it's one big mess. And the sooner we find out, the better. Uh, but the players have to do the job on the pitch because I'm just woeful at the end of the game today. It's yeah. funny, isn't it? I thought, I'm sorry, Matt. I thought at the end when... It was one all. Kaminsky got a goal kick and he didn't look in a hurry to take it. It looked like Luton mentally were like, we'll take the point. And mm, I wonder yeah. whether it was it is the points deduction that was the factor then in that last last kind of 10 minutes of the game where Luton could have pushed for a victory. And their mentality was, you know what, we'll take this point and see what they get on Monday. And we were like, well, let's just play it out and see what we get on Monday as well. Like if we'd have been hit by six or nine points before this game, we might have pushed on and won that game. But because we don't know and they don't know, it was almost like once it got to one all, that was it. We'll settle for that. Both both teams looked like they were settling for it because I was fearful of Luton in the stoppage time. And they, as I said, Kaminsky took his time with the goal kick. There was no urgency. So I do think the points penalty was in the minds of the players in that last section of the game. Mm -hmm. definitely it affects yeah. everything everything it does um and i actually I, I noticed that too and i i wonder imagine we get zero points on monday imagine that luton would be kicking themselves <laughs> they didn't go and try and win the game mm. um but yeah yeah it's 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 a, an irritating sort of wasp in the car situation hopefully we just get it over with yeah, well, I don't see Luton gain too many more points because I think we've gifted them a point today. I don't look at them and think, Christ, they're going to get another 12 points or something this season. It makes It actually makes it more frustrating that we haven't won the game, but equally, I suppose, it, it gives us hope. And like I asked that question because if there wasn't a point deduction, I don't think I would be massively worried about relegation, but now I massively am. And I said this all through the week, if Burnley beat Brentford, what a result that would be. And we've missed out on not capitalising on that mm. as well. Because Brentford are on their asses, and uh, you know they've lost to to Burnley. I bet their fans are fear, fearing the worst as well, which means it's not all over for us by a long shot. It's just so many missed opportunities. There's you know Brian away missed opportunity, Luton away missed opportunity. You know we just keep we keep costing ourselves, and I suppose I mean it was, I get, does that make it more annoying, Mark? That in theory we're good enough and we're letting ourselves down, or does it give you hope that if we can rectify it? We'll probably be all right. 
I, I hope and think we will get more positive attacking performances in the Fulham and Palace games. I think we will, right? Because the, you know, it's the, the nerves perhaps aren't there, and those are opportunities where we can where we've got the home fans behind us. Those two teams turn up without too much motivation. I think you know they're both safe. Um, I'm, I'm not saying they're on the beach, but that we should we should have we should have the willingness to win greater than them in those games. I would say, right? I'd like to think it, that will be on show. If it's not, then perhaps we deserve to go down because we we need to attack those games and win them. So I'd like to think that will bring something a different approach out in Nuno. And what we saw, which we can say was a negative end to the game. We won't see that again, and we'll we'll go for three points in both those games and hopefully win them. But there's no doubt that had we won today, those that we would go into this period feeling a lot more comfortable because there would be more distance between us and Luton, and we'd have overtaken Brentford as well. So it's just typical Forest. It's just like if there's a way of making it hard for us ourselves, we'll take that. Yeah, let's take that option, please. That one there, not the one where. We kind of—I'm not saying we would have been coasting, but we would have had breathing space, and it would have been nice to get breathing space going into those games. And instead of that, with the penalty coming as well, we're probably not going to have that, and it's going to put the onus on those games, put the pressure on those games even more. And that's going to be in the—you know—we're going to sense that on the pitch and in the crowd when we approach Fulham Palace. So it is, like you said, missed opportunity again, and a missed opportunity to rel- relieve some of the pressure on us, which hopefully. Won't be a factor, but I fear it could be. Could be, could be. I mean, we at least we're not talking about the referee, uh, who I thought was yeah. all right. Lewin probably thought <laughs> yeah, he was a bit harsh on them, but I thought he was pretty good. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. A, a less, a worse ref would have booked Murillo for that challenge on the touchline. There's actually nothing in that. It's just that their pitch is so compact and everything. So yeah, he was fine. So let's mm. let's give a nod to him. The Darren England, yeah. Right, quick word for our sponsors. Uh, uh, Trent Navigation, of course. Oasis and playing on Saturday, the 13th of April, 5.30, straight after Forest v. Wolves. Free entry. Uh, get your food there. Uh, we'll see outdoor and indoor bars as well. Uh, as I say, straight after Forest v. Wolves. And thank you again to the NAV for their uh, ongoing and unrelenting support of this podcast, even as we discuss another disappointing result. There's a few people in the comments, and quite a lot on Twitter, saying Nuno out. So I'll just broach it quickly. To me, that ship sailed a long time ago and there's no point sacking a manager this late in the season. But uh, any notion of it for you, Chris? Absolutely not. Um, I don't think it's helpful. I don't think it'll give us the boost that we need going to these final nine games. Um, I I, I agree with a lot of the people that Nuno hasn't been uh, as good as we we once thought we, we, you know, he hasn't progressed us results wise. He has performances wise, but not with results. But no, it doesn't, that's not going to help our cause at all, in my opinion. Um, we we just need to keep our heads down, keep our noses clean, and get on with these two games. I don't, yeah, it's not, we've proven we've got rid of two, Steve Cooper and Nuno are both two good managers, and they've both gone on big slumps this season. Why is that? It's not because of the managers, it's because of some of the players. So, um, in my opinion, no, absolutely not. Makes no sense to me whatsoever. What about you, Mark? No, no. I mean, you could, it's going to do us no good at this point. I mean, who would we bring in at this point to make an impact? And and um, I don't doubt Nuno's credentials. I just think the, uh, the, the, as I said, the magnitude of the match and the uncertainty with the points deduction fed into his mentality a bit. And I think with 15 or 20 minutes to go with stoppage time, he decided to make a move which protected our lead rather than one that would have given us a platform to add to it. And I don't know if that's his first port of call normally. I think he he can be quite positive, as we've seen in the past with us. I think he knows he's got players that can be positive and attack games. But I just think he, he felt the circumstances around this match and what hung over it and what was dependent on it meant that he should try and be conservative. And it, and And... I think he'll look at it and he'll know that it didn't work. Um, you know, I don't think Felipe, perhaps, it's not fair to him to bring him on and make him a scapegoat, but is he a player that he's going to come on and just have that impact in the last 20 minutes? Perhaps he could have done. Perhaps he could have led us to victory with a domineering defensive performance, but it, it, at his stage in his career, perhaps he hasn't got that in him anymore. So perhaps he just didn't have that player to bring on to to see us over the line in the end. He tried it and it didn't work and it backfired. And we saw that at Brighton as well. He tried to be 
conservative there with his team selection to try and contain Brighton until the last half an hour and then hit them with energy and and pace at the end. That was his ploy. It didn't work. We lost 1-0. So he's tried a couple of things in the last couple of games and it hasn't come off. You can say near Cassia left back. I don't know. I don't even know what he was trying there, but that didn't work either. So there, there are things now where you look at him and go, that was a manager's fault on three occasions now, three, three consecutive away games. Um, but apart from the near Cassi one, I can see the logic behind it. I just think the pressure of the situation now is getting to him and he's perhaps not making natural decisions that he would have done 10 games ago when he was a bit more forward thinking. I hope he can change that going into Fulham and Palace because we need to be front foot in those matches. Yeah, that's exactly what I think. I mean, I'm, I am annoyed, as I, as I made pretty clear, that three away games in a row, the manager's been a negative factor in results. But I think it would be pointless to change manager. I don't think we get anyone better. I just want to go back to that kind of positivity uh, and front foot approach that we saw from Nuno when, when we were winning games. Uh, and I think it's a, just a mentality thing around the whole team and the whole club. Like, the whole thing is take a step back, don't take a step forwards. Uh, in game management and on the pitch, and I just think we need to get away from that because if we keep doing it, we probably will go down. Let's let's go and attack Crystal Palace. Let's go and attack Fulham, and let's be positive because we started off uh, second half in that in this game in that way, and we should have kicked on. We should have won two or three nil, like Mark mm. said. There was no reason not to win that game comfortably, and that's so annoying. And it's the story of a season. I mean. I could put, you know, I could just re-upload a couple of these podcasts, and we can just talk about the, <laughs> the same things. And I could just change the episode description. Sometimes that's for, that's you know a, another one on the long list of uh, frustrations. Uh, a couple of people mentioned in the comments we haven't uh, touched on at all. I mean, there were some entertaining moments. Uh, Chris Murillo pinging one in from twenty yards inside of his own half. Imagine if that had gone in, then we would have been fine, wouldn't we? Yeah, well, he's, he's trying to get noticed, doesn't he? I mean, he doesn't need to because he's been noticed already because he's so bloody good um, and he's young and he's new to the league and everyone's talking about him. But, I mean, I, it, it was it was unbelievable. I was like, what are you doing? And then I was like, oh, wait a second, brilliant. We won a corner from that as well. Did nothing with the corner. We had more chance of scoring from <laughs> 70 yards away yeah. than we did from the, from the bloody corner. Ridiculous. Uh, maybe we should just let him do it. Just let him do whatever he wants. Because unbelievable effort. Yeah, it was it was quite remarkable. Um, yeah, there were some good moments in the game. You know, like Alanga's ball cleared off the line, Origi's ball cleared off the line. We we did have those chances to win it. Um, but yeah, no, that was lovely for Murillo. Absolute class. But yeah, he's he's certainly getting noticed. And then he wins a corner. And no one says anything to him. They go, actually, yeah, fair play. You know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and Yancey exactly. at the end as well, Mark. I mean, that was a great hit. If that goes in, it's, it's another if, isn't it? But yeah, create as uh, uh, you know, a, a moments and opportunities. It's annoying. I think Origi should have scored. That was a real guilt-edged opportunity. I think because he had time to collect it, control it, size up the shot, and I don't think he hit it cleanly. If it had gone to Chris Wood, I think we'd have scored. I think he would have put that away. Origi's. You know, had chances at Brighton as well. I think they were more difficult chances. I think this one today, though, he really should have given the defender on the line no chance. And I think that was the real one. I think Alanga did okay with his in the second half. He probably did as good as he could do. And he showed strength and determination to get on the end of it and get the shot in. So, I mean, and, and Chris Wood's finish, Chris said it was excellent. It's a really good finish. I mean, that's not easy to do. It would have been easy to spoon that over the bar. And I think we've got to credit Chris Wood. Like Nico, um, I think he's been pretty outstanding when called upon this season and like Nico it's taken a while for him to establish himself in the team um the, the Tyro injury is is terrible timing but hopefully he can come back after the international break and, and, and I don't don't actually think he looked fit when he came back this time so maybe it's best anyway he needs more recuperation but in wood if 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 the injury today is not serious we've got a player who is high on confidence who who can take his chances um, and today we we gave him that good chance and he converted it and Origi couldn't. I think that that was disappointing. We just didn't take that that first chance, Origi, and then we'd have been out of sight. And then we can then that's when you manage the game out. But yeah, I, it's a shame. It's a shame because again, in attacking areas, we did enough to win the game and with a bit more of a positive outlook, we could have we could have won the game with with something to spare. I think. Yeah. I think my take on Origi is that I think he's done quite well in recent games, but he's had some very favourable matchups. Like today, he's up against a right a right wing back playing left sided centre half mm. just to run at. Like that ball sells his distribution. By the way, was really good today. He found yeah. it quite a few times, and he yeah. probably didn't make the most of it. And at Brighton, 
that he was against a Stupinan who looked like the player with the least confidence I've seen for a long time and probably didn't make the most of it. And I just feel like if maybe a Langer had been on that side and Hudson Adoy is on the other side, uh, would we have been better? I don't know, but I would personally quite like to see uh, yeah, Hudson Adoy come back into the team against Brighton. Uh, thank you very much, Steve. Do us a favour if you've not uh, already, do, uh, do hit like. Uh, it really helps us out. Uh, and good to have uh, 530 odd people with us uh, as we share the misery. Maybe some people are upbeat. Is that Steve think. McQueen, as in The Great Escape? We we need that, maybe. That's kind of handy. That's like... Or the director, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> director, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, God. Uh, would it here? Would it be a great escape if we stayed up? Because it actually, I don't. It would just be a a bit of a miserable limp over the line, and f- far from it, I guess, Chris, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. I mean, have we been in the relegation zone apart from half time on Wednesday? Somehow, we. Yeah. I don't think we have. Um, I think that that we will be uh, if we get a, a punishment there on Monday. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I think it w- if we get a deduction. I think it'd be a really good result to stay up, like uh, because the deduction obviously affects the rest of the team and their mentality going into games, as well as obviously the, the points tally on the table. Um, yeah, I, I do you know what? I'm not trying to be poly positive because I am annoyed about today. I'm really annoyed, and I don't like Luton, and I think they deserve to go down. I do, and I think they deserve to go down next year. I don't care what anyone else says about their plucky results. They've won one game in eleven or something ridiculous like that. But uh, we we are coming off the back of a pretty tough run. You know, Brighton away, not an easy place. Well, they hadn't lost a Premier League game since August. Liverpool home, we lost late in that. Villa away, we had Arsenal at home in January. You know, we are coming off the back of a tough run of games. I think we've had three out of four away games. And now we're coming into a space where I think we have Palace, Fulham, uh, and then uh, an away game to Spurs and then home to Wolves. So we've now three and four uh, home games coming up against teams that we could beat. Um I think we can do it, and I think we can do exactly what we did last season. Hopefully, Tywell's back for the, the run in as well, like he was last year. Uh, we just need to 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 lift lift the lift the roof off the stadium in the city ground, and um, yeah, hopefully it can be a great escape of some sort. But no, I don't think it will be a great escape. I think we deserve to stay up. Uh, yes, as Richard said, more poly positive. You you're our sub Greg Mitchell, <laughs> I think, today, Chris. So good to have you uh, giving this giving that viewpoint. I don't know how to set up polls in uh, the things. I don't think the platform I use is does it. But if people all just want, it's five hundred and forty people put put it watching. Post, put, put yes if you think we'll stay up, and no if we'll go down. And I'll just be interested to see what people say in the next couple of minutes if you think we're going to go stay up or go down. Uh, while people do that, Mark, and as we wind down. Any final thoughts from you on where we're at heading into the international break and how you think things might uh, shake out in the next few weeks? Uh, I think that um, I'd, I like to think that what, you know, the, there'll be some negativity about Nuno's decisions today. But as I said, I'd like to think that that was caused by the tension and the, and what was at stake in the game. Um, and I'd like to think that we'll see something different from us in the fixtures we've got coming up. Though We've got a run that means that hopefully we can be positive and attack them and get points and, and get ourselves clear. Um, and we've got the players to do it. We just need the mentality to do it. That's it. And I think Nuno can do that. I think he'll get them in, and he'll look ahead now, um, and he'll concentrate on get getting the, the players fit that we need back on the pitch, whether it be Wood or Awane. And then hopefully he'll sit down and he'll plot how we're going to win those games in a, with a positive outlook, rather than scrape uh, scrape to a win or, or get an edgy draw and, and and get us to a point where we're we're going right to the final game. We've got it in our hands, I think. Uh, to play ourselves out of this, um, even with the points penalty. So I'd, I I want to give him the benefit of doubt and think that he'll approach it in a way that, in a in, show courage, show bravery in, in the way he puts his team out and a way he lets them play. That's what we saw early on. And he'll go back to that and uh, we'll get ourselves out of it. So I want to be positive, as Chris said. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I had. I mean, I feel it felt very cathartic for me to just have a good moan at the top of the show about uh, substitutions and tactics. And you know, now I feel more positive, uh, and hopefully, I'll feel better in the morning. And like, I know we discussed, like, people are very down on the manager, but I think it's a a, a non debate uh, to to make any change now. Certainly, uh, yes, no in the comments. It's pretty even split. I think a uh, pretty fifty fifty, uh, and. Some people wisely saying here, it all comes down to the points deduction. Three points stay mm. up, six points goal difference. And that's kind of what I think at this stage. 
so yeah, that's that's probably quite wise. Any final thoughts from you, uh, Chris? It's just cool to get this game out of the way. Just get it out of the way. We've been looking at this Luton game for ages. We've been looking at this weekend and the, the result of the points deduction for ages. Get the game out of the way. Get Monday out of the way. And move on. That's you know we have games. We have winnable games. We play Burnley and Sheffield United away. Do you know what? We should beat both of them away. We should. We play a Palace and Fulham at home. We should get at least one win out of those two. We should play Wolves at home. You know we we've got winnable games coming up. Um, we now have more home games and away games to play. I believe. Five home games, four. I know one of them is Man City, but look, we saw it happen there last year. I, I just, I just think we need to get this weekend out of the way. And yeah, it's pretty devastating to concede late again and have Luton peg us back after we've we, we played such a, ge- a good game. And as Mark said, we controlled it. We should win two or three nil. It is frustrating. It is upsetting. But the, the only positive I can take away from it is Luton. They didn't lay a glove on us. They don't look good enough. They're not a good team. And they 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 were sort of playing for the draw at the end. I wonder how that 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 strategy is going to go for them going at the last nine games because I do believe we're good enough to pick up points. But yeah, I'm not going to be too down about it because I've been down enough this season. So I'm going to pick myself up for St Patrick's Day tomorrow and go out and have a drink. <laughs> good man, good man. Uh, I did uh, forget to thank Shelley Hargreaves for becoming a member earlier as well. Thank you very much, Shelley, and everyone who signed up uh, over the last. A uh, few weeks, good to get a little community of people going. Uh, right, I think we shall leave it there. Uh, let's hope for better in weeks to come. We shall be back on Monday at 11am with uh, Fletch and Temps. Dissect this game a bit more. Maybe we'll know the points deduction news by then, uh, but we'll touch on that, uh, if obviously, if uh, we do find out. And then it's an international break, so it might be a slightly quieter week next week content-wise, but... Perhaps everyone just wants to rest up anyway after getting today out of the way. Right, uh, Mark Southerns, thank you very much as ever. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Chris, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Mark, as well. Love your stats. Genuinely do. I come in with the eye test and you come in with the facts, so thank you. <laughs> the king of stats. Uh, Chris, when's your next podcast? I'll give you a quick plug. Oh, I don't know. Maybe next week. Um, probably, yeah, we might take a break as well, to be honest. Um, probably some stage next week. I would say Monday or Tuesday, but again, that's chaotic. But yeah, may- next week, I'd say there'll be a podcast out, at least one before we get back. Good, good. And do give FPL Black Box a read. Uh, although I partly blame Mark for getting my hopes up so much for this game because he quite rightly oh, no. put, put up Luton's defensive numbers. Which were frankly dog SHI. You can fill in. We don't sound here, uh, and that that totally convinced me we were going to win this game. Lewin's defensive stats combined with the that Bournemouth game, and we didn't capitalise again. But tomorrow is a new day, and I'm going to try to end on a positive note. Enjoy your evening, everyone. My in-laws are over, so I've got to go and cook dinner now, and then I'll. Uh, clip this up and download it as well for audio so thanks very much everyone who listens on audio thanks for everyone who watches on itunes uh, youtube do us a favor if you haven't already hit like hit subscribe consider becoming a channel member my mouse is frozen so i don't think i can end the stream i can't put up the seven second video so oh, i'm gonna do it anyway because yeah now it's back do us a favor Hit like if you haven't already on this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, that'd be great as well. Uh, we do really appreciate all the support and all the company uh, that we get throughout the week. But in the meantime, uh, have a good evening, everyone, and we shall see you soon. <laughs>